Hello, buddy, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 Quick Magic Gameplay. This time around, we're on Langui playing as the Force of the Empire against the Force of the Greenskins. And as usual, <laughs> green, fighting against Greenskins is always a pain in the rear. Uh, greenskins with the current WA are just such a frustrating faction to play against. I basically say this every time I think I play against them. But, um,. That said, with Empire, you definitely do have, I think, a good shot. There is a lot of Empire can do, especially because they're such a cav-heavy faction. You can definitely take advantage of the Greenskins' pretty bad cavalry units and sort of bog them down in cheap trash and shoot them to death, kite them to death, cycle charge them to death. So that's kind of what I'm doing here with this build. It's definitely very scummy. For my lord, I'm running with Boris Todd, the Toddbringer. Now, obviously, Boris, not an amazing combat lord, but he does have... Uh, of course, healing. He's got the White Cloak of Ulrich, which is a great buff. He's got the uh, Hold the Line, which is plus five melee defense and AOE, which is really nice. Midland Roofing, of course, for the regen. And then, and then the uh, Crush the Weak, which is a debuff that applies when enemy leadership drops below 50%, which isn't too hard with Greenskins. I also did bring him with Foe Seeker and Deadly Onslaught here, looking to get a little bit more damage out of him, if possible. Alongside him, we do have a Bright Wizard on a Pegasus. This is a bit of a risky pick. He's only got 3,000 HP. He's got very little armor, though. Better than, say, Skink Cheese. He does have 50 armor, which is better than some some have. I, uh, but I'm hoping that with Fireball, I can snipe enemy lords or heroes. And then, of course, Cascading Fire Cloak, nice defensive spell. And the Piercing Bolts of Burning, meant to synergize with big single models, especially the Steam Tank and Boris, to nuke enemies, trying to encircle them and beat them down in close quarters. He also does have a Power Stone to get extra Winds of Magic. And, of course, Kindle Flame, because you want to be getting more damage out of your Fireballs and your Piercing Bolts as well. Now... For a front line, it's simply five units of spears. Nothing to say there, and look at me draw a line. I can't even draw worth a damn, but oh well. That's what you get with this channel. Um, five spears, of course. They're not going to do amazing, but they can bog down enemy greenskins. They'll trade okay with, say, goblins. Uh, if your opponent, especially if your opponent doesn't get a full wall off, they'll do okay. Uh, and, of course, the main thing is they're going to provide a decent anvil for the two Demigriff Knights, as well as the Nice Little Blazing Sun and Normal Empire Knights. Uh, we are running on a bit of a budget, so the Empire Knights will have to do... Uh, normally, I would, of course, prefer Reich's Garden or Knights of Blazing Sun, but it is what it is. I do think this is one of the matches where Demigriff Knights are an amazing choice because they're great against Black Orcs. They're much better against Black Orcs than Demigriff Knights with Halberds, and you really don't need the Demigriff Knights with Halberds. Ironically, my opponent here actually brought in Arachnorok, which is a bit surprising. You don't see this all that often against Empire because they've got so much Black Powder. But um, even then, the Demigriffs will do an okay job against the Arachnorok if need be. Uh, finally, there is a steam tank here, which is unbreakable, causes fear, terror, which is amazing against greenskins, of course, and we can use it as a chariot. If my opponent has some black orcs, for example, and they can just kind of plow through them and run, run all over them and be a major pain in the ass that way. Now, for my opponent, obviously on Long Wheel, you do have this nice little wooded area that you can hide in, and he's taking full advantage of that. Uh, he does have, for his lord, a wurtzag over here, the Baconator, mounted on his uh, mounted on Spleen Ripper, his War Boar, uh, with quite a selection of spells. And he does have he has Mork, which is a little surprising. He actually, does he have his full, it looks like he's actually got his full spell kit. Uh, he's just missing Brain Burst, though. So that's a little surprising. I personally don't think it's worth bringing the full spell kit on Wordsag. I think you should bring, like, one or two spells and settle for that, especially when you've also got a Night Goblin Shaman there. I think it's unnecessary. But, of course, he also does have Effigy. He's got Wa. He's got Fos, or Get Back here. Bonewood Staff. Squiggly Beast, uh, Wartsack's Revenge, which increases miscast chance, and then War Pain of Wartsack, which is all really, really potent. Alongside him is a Night Goblin Shaman, probably the most annoying and frustrating hero to play against currently, who does have this ability, Vindictive Glare, which is stupidly powerful right now. 250 meters range, does ridiculous amounts of anti-large damage, especially against light, lightly armored targets, and my caster especially has to be super wary of that, because if he gets smacked, he's going to be dead. Uh, he also does have Gorkle Fix It for the crowd control, and then Sneaky Stab In, of course, for the, the extra damage on his troops, and uh, Mad Cat Mushrooms, which means he can potentially do a double tap with Vindictive Glare. Water of Jet, of course, for the extra wins. Frontline is composed of Orc Boys, not much to be said there. They are coming out of the woods pretty quickly, alongside two units of Black Orcs to provide a bit of AP punch. The Rusty Errors are in the back. These guys are a bit of a pain in the rear. The Rusty Errors, if they weaken your Lord or Hero, with their armor sundering effect, it makes them much more vulnerable to Vindictive Glare. And you can see already Boris has lost roughly 1100 HP to that first Vindictive Glare my opponent cast it. There's also an Arachnoch Spider here, of course, the Arachnoch Queen, as we mentioned before, and some Goblin Wolf Riders on the periphery. And these guys are already converging on me, as well as these nasty Skulkers looking to get into a backline. That does not exist. And this is one of the nice things if you play these sorts of builds, you don't have to worry about a backline. 
In the meantime, the Steam Tank is punishing this Ragnar Queen. Uh, and you can see here, I'm trying to sort of come in with Boris and do a scouting run, see if I can spot the Night Goblin Shaman, who's of course stalked. And it's really frustrating because the Night Goblin Shaman can pop his spells, and before you can get in on him, he can duck back into cover. So what I was trying to do is spot him for my Bright Wizard so I could snipe, counter snipe with a Fireball. Um, and you can see here the Fireball has 300 meters range, which is nice. It gives you a significant edge over Vindictive Lair, if you can get that spot. In the meantime, the uh, Steam Tank is popping shots at the Ragnarok Queen here, whittling her down, and another Vindictive Glare is going to go in against poor Boris, which is really, really frustrating. And uh, Gaze of Mork does go in there as well, so he's lost another 2,000-ish HP, so it's, the, the damage is really adding up. I do try to counter that with, with a Fireball, and I get a miscast because of Word Sack's Revenge, and because... Stock is fun. Uh, my opponent's Night Goblin Shaman immediately vanishes again, and I'm not able to get the Fireball. The Fireball doesn't go in. It just doesn't cast. So, fun stuff for the to begin this game. It's really frustrating. I was getting mildly ticked off, and I'm running away with Boris. Now, my opponent does make a bit of a mistake here. He sneaks a little too close with his nasty Skulkers, reveals them, and uh, taking advantage of my massive mobility advantage, we are going to start converging on him with some of my units. And in the meantime, the Steam Tank popping shots at the Queen. Uh, who's being forced off pretty efficiently here. She's going to pop a summon here, looking to pressure me a little bit, or provide a little bit of support when she's out of the fight. You can see already she's lost a good 1,500 or so HP. Um, it's actually about 1,900. So Steam Tank, over time, is just a applying that constant stream of pressure, which is really useful. Over here, the Nasty Skulkers are going to get lit up. They get spotted, and they are in for a very bad time. You can see the converging heavy cavalry coming in. Empire Knights charging through the woods, running over these poor gobbos. Obviously, Nasty Skulkers are an amazing unit, but not when they are crushed in this brutal manner. Sandwiched between Empire Cav and in comes Boris to finish the job, and these guys are in full flight now, completely broken, and they're going to get run down. Over here, we do see the Goblin Wolfriders charging out of the woodwork alongside the Spider Hatchlings, but the Demigriff Knights are going to soak up that charge, counter them, and just pile in with alongside the Steam Tank. And these guys, despite their uh, leadership buff, from the, high, the chevrons are not going to be able to stick around. You can see the steam tank diving in there, providing its support, and just these guys are crushed and forced to flee. So that is a very big win for the Empire here. Managing to pick off two okay, the, the two somewhat costly cavalry units. Do keep in mind, like, obviously Goblin Wolf Rider is dirt cheap, I think at like 300 gold, but with the amount of points my opponents probably spent chevroning them up, they're probably about 400 apiece, so for almost no loss we got rid of about 800 gold and the 500 gold from the Nasty Skulker, so that's quite a bit of a win there for me, and you can see the Demigrus squeeze out without too much damage. In the meantime, the Stank here does kind of run over these Spider Hatchlings, who are of course small and easy to squash, but unfortunately it is now being pressured by the Arachnarok Queen, so definitely some bad stuff going on, but my opponent pops Wah, and being the courageous person I am, I promptly run away with all my spears. You can see, you can see them fleeing for dear life there from the from the Orc boys, and wasting most of Wah. You can see my opponent here has so squandered the vast majority of his Wah, and that is really bad for him. In the meantime, a Bright Wizard does a flyby, my opponent at this point not having the Winds of Magic, and we pop the Night Goblin Shaman with a Fireball. Fireball, of course, does some monstrous damage, and uh, it immediately knocks this guy down pretty low, and <laughs> the splash actually damages Word Sag and the big boss, too, which is nice. In the meantime, uh, Boris is kind of trying to harass. You can see the Steam Tank here getting bogged down. It can't really run. Its speed is, I think, in the 50s, normally. Uh, it's, it's a 48, maybe, something like that. But it's getting poisoned now by the Ragnarok Queen, and the Black Orcs are going to be dicing it up pretty badly. Uh, of course, it has basically no melee defense. In the meantime, though, we are kind of trying to circle around, get an angle on my opponent's lord. You can see another spell cast going in. This is just such a frustrating situation. Being constantly harassed by Gaze of Mork and Gaze of Gore and uh, the Vindictive Lair. Boris taking another hit there, though some of it does overshoot and hit the Ragnar Queen. Uh, but in the meantime, things are starting to look a little better for us. What we did manage to snipe that Goblin Shaman with our Bright Wizard, because of course, good old Fireball roasting Gobbos. You can see his corpse laying there in the in the dirt. And over here, Boris is diving in against the Arachnar Queen, and we are going to start dropping a Searing Bolts on these Black Rooks. And you can see they're standing still there, and they're going to take a pounding. It's a normal Searing Bolts. It does about 2,000 worth of damage, and these guys are in a much worse spot. Now, Boris is bogging down the Arachnar Queen, and the Steam Tank is able to flee, which is really, really important. In the meantime, the Rusty Air is here trying to get some pot shots into Boris, who's been hit with a Hatsating Fire Cloak, but we are able to remove the Ragnar Queen from play, pushing her off. And uh, although another Magic Missile is coming in, Gaze of Mork is nowhere near as good as Vindictive Glare, so that's pretty good. And the infantry fight actually swinging in our favor, because with the unit of Demigriffs and the Empire Knights piling through, we're able to sweep down the Greenskin flank and run these troops over. And one by one, the Greenskins are breaking. They do manage to rat off some more spears every now and then, but it's just not enough. They we're going to be able to wrap this unit up of Orc Boys. And Demigriffs, of course, applying fear, uh, are going to be helping force these quick breaks as well. 
In the meantime, the Bright Wizard here did try to pursue the Ragnarok Queen off the map and almost paid for it with his life, getting, uh, sort of getting, uh, not getting on top of her fast enough, so she was able to summon the Spider Hatchlings, who are now bogging down my stank, and, uh, that, that's not good. Boris, though, continuously being pounded by those magic missiles, and this was, in my opinion, a huge misplay from my opponent. He didn't use his magic missiles to try to snipe the Bright Wizard. Now, obviously, there is some issues with the range. It's, the magic missiles only have 250 and range compared to the 300 on Fireball, so I could play it much safer. But really, trying to snipe Boris, not the way to go in my opinion, uh, especially at this stage of the game. We do use a normal Fireball there uh, to pop the Ragnarok Queen. Do keep in mind Fireball has less, or no, Overcast Fireball has less AP damage, so that is worth noting. And so it's uh, good to use a normal Fireball if you're dealing with armor targets. And we're whittling down the Ragnarok Queen. She's is down to 1400 HP, diving in on the Stank and starting to bludgeon this guy. Steam Tanks really cannot fight in close quarters against something like a Spider. But at this stage of the game, things are definitely swinging in our favor. This one unit of Black Orcs kept in reserve this whole game to defend. Uh, the Orc boys in full flight being run down by cavalry. And over here, the Steam Tank squeaks away with its life as the Demigivers come in, uh, charging into the Ragnarok Queen and bringing her down. And you can see this monstrosity here going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Empire's Finest. And uh, they're just running her down. And this time, there will be no coming back for the, for the Queen. She's going to be chased off unceremoniously by these Empire Knights. And really... We've, this is going to help us a immense amount, of course. Now, unfortunately, one of the weird things is the Ragnar Queen, because she's got Strider, and she's got, and at this point, these guys were poisoned, I think, until just now. Uh, but plus, they're very tired. I think she's, oh, she's also very tired. But because she does have Strider, she's actually pretty quick. And uh, with the burst of speed from retreating, she's able to outpace him through the woods. But she's still going to be driven off the map. And even so, only 5,600 HP, it's just not enough. Especially with the Steam Tank there to pop some shots. Now, as the game does sort of wrap up, you can see we're at this point sniping away at Wordsack, hitting him with the fireball, sniping away with the steam tank, whittling the Hoglord down, looking to punish him for his impetuous behavior. Another another cannonball there, clipping him a little bit. And at this point, it's the Empire State Troops are reforming ranks. Those courageous spearmen looking to reorganize their Empire Knights, preparing for another charge against these Black Orcs, piling in against them. Of course, they are immune to Psychology, and they've got 110 armor, which is really, really annoying. And this Goblin Shaman will be, or Big Boss, will be slowing us down and weakening us. But the Demigriffs are now in the fight. Going to tear these guys apart. And my opponent is forced to GG out with a unit of very healthy Black Orcs still on the field. So definitely some brutal stuff in the Empire's favor. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, I absolutely hate playing against Greenskins. I think it's the way currently WoW works, and I've said this a bajillion times before, is pure garbage. And you're not likely to see me say much else about it. Uh, I think Vindictive Glare currently needs to be toned down. The overcast damage is ridiculous. Um, and it's just too easy to sit and snipe with a Goblin Shaman and, and not really risk yourself. And you can pay... The Goblin Shaman stripped down with just Vindictive Glare is 220 gold. Which is an incredibly cheap investment. And had my opponent been a little more astute there, I think, he could have sniped down my Bright Wizard. And really screwed me over that game. Um... Then again, I was playing pretty cautious early on with the Bright Wizard, so perhaps not. But still, uh, I think that would have been a much better move for my opponent to try to snipe down the Bright Wizard rather than Boris. And that would essentially be paying for your caster there. And then some. My Bright Wizard probably costs about 1,000 gold. of Vindictive Glare times 2 is like 18 wins of magic. And that's assuming you need 2. Uh, you probably just need 1 overcast and 1 normal cast and you get it done. Uh, so, And you remove all my wins of magic from the field potentially. Otherwise, this sort of build is something I really do enjoy. I think it works really well against Greenskins. Demigriff Knights, like I said, are great because they tear up Black Orcs really well. They do a lot better than Halberds. Uh, and you don't really need the Halberds for most Greenskin troops. Um, their cavalry is just too squishy. If they bring the Regiment of Renown Boar Boys, Demigriff Knights are still good enough to outtrade them. Um, especially with support from someone like Boris to apply that fear and terror. Uh, and a Bright Wizard providing his... Uh, Cloak, cascading fire cloak and being able to tear up black orcs who aren't the worst especially if combined with nasty skulkers for example being able to tear them up with demigriffs is really nice uh, the steam tank also one of the few matchups where i think the steam tank is decent and we saw it apply so we gained two chevrons in the course of that game and we saw it apply so much pressure to the Ragnarok queen and really whittle her down before lines ever met which is really important in my opinion so that's the well, the spears held uh, the fireballs wrecked the shaman so a bit of counter sniping uh fireball also arguably overtuned against foot lords because it just it's so hard. To, it's like impossible to dodge for slow foot, foot lords, and squishy foot lords are just so susceptible to it. So fireballs arguably overtuned there as well. Um, 
but uh, Empire, so cheesing against cheese, I guess, but Empire Knights and the Knights of Blazing Sun also did some good work. For my opponent's build, I don't think it's a bad composition. Personally, not a huge fan of the Ragnar Queen, because if your opponent, with this sort of build, you don't really have enough width. If your opponent decides to sort of do gun box, you're not going to have enough width to pressure the back line. Two Goblin Wolf Riders are going to get swept aside by any generic Empire Calf, and an Arachnar Queen is going to get shot to death. Like, two handguns or, like, a silver bullet and Sterling's Revenge or something are going to tear her a new one. And so will Outriders, all those units. So I really don't think the Arachnar Queen's a good choice here if you're going with so little protection. Uh, there's only... My opponent only really had the two Goblin Wolf Riders and kind of the Skulkers to apply backline pressure. Uh, which I don't think is the way... To, I, I don't think that's good. Obviously, the Ragnar Queen can summon her Spiderlings, but still, I, I just don't think it's all that viable with this sort of narrow build. I think you need to go much wider. But gross, well played to my opponent. Uh, definitely that Night Goblin Shaman was very frustrating to deal with, um, especially because I miscasted and didn't get my spell off, so that was really annoying. But uh, <laughs> still, very well played to DOS here. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you find it entertaining and fun. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. If you have any comments, any criticism, any questions, and as always, any requests, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below, and I will do my very best to respond as soon as I can. I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.